ka de fat metabolism la, uh, now the body has uh, a limited supply of glucose uh, relative to the energy stored as a fat so most of the energy in our body is uh, uh, stored as a fat so as we said uh, we have limited capacity of storing glucose as a glycogen as a source of energy there are a number of different sources of uh, fat uh, as a source of energy uh, in the body what does a typical fat consist of uh, the typical fat is triglyceride the whole region what the triglyceride consists of triglyceride consists of a glycerol molecule and a fatty acid molecule so three fatty acids are attached to one glycerol and that's what triglycerides are so we eat food and that food contains fat proteins and carbohydrates and uh, as a result we digest it and uh, in the case of fat we produce triglycerides in the stomach so we said that the, f uh, the food goes into the stomach and the digestion uh, begins uh, we know that the digestion of carbohydrate begins even in the oral cavity but digestion continues in the stomach and then in the intestine and so forth so those molecules then travel into the small intestine where the bile salt produced by the uh, gallbladder uh, will emulsify the fat so we know that the bile is important in uh, emulsification of the fat so what happens over here is that once in the uh, uh, small intestine this is the big molecule of fat fat droplet and this is the bile salts so the bile salts will actually uh, 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 break down this one and as a result you have the bile salts surrounding this uh, fat molecule and this is called uh, missiles so if you look at the a uh, uh, closer look at the uh, the missiles you see the r groups over here those are the r groups of the uh, fat molecules and those r groups of the triglycerides are non-polar that's why they're facing each other and those are the polar uh, regions uh, that are covered by the bile salt and now what happens is that this uh, missile uh, from the intestine will make its journey down through the small intestine and the lipase uh, from the pancreas will be released and it uh, will degrade this uh, uh, fat molecule into uh, fatty acids and glycerols and let's look at this scenario over here so this one is the fat molecule this is the triglyceride and the scissor represents the lipase so as a result what do you get you get one glycerol molecule and you get one two three fatty acid because remember triglycerides are consist of three fatty acids one two three and one glycerol so to each carbon molecule one fatty acid was attached and the lipase broke them down into one glycerol and three fatty acid so then this uh, fatty acids and triglycerides move down the intestine and from the intestine they have to go to where be absorbed into the circulation now uh, the triglycerides are then packed uh, the triglycerides are packed with the apoproteins that you see over here so those are the apoproteins uh, uh, and cholesterol into the blood so you see the cholesterol over here they're packed with the apoproteins and cholesterol in the blood soluble complex and this blood soluble complex of the combination of glycerol fatty acids cholesterol and apoproteins all together they will known um, be called as um, chylomicrons and this chylomicrons will uh, move uh, into the lymphatic vessels and the lymphatic vessels eventually will take them to the uh, uh, circulation so let's look at this package so they all pack together and this package over here this is the chylomicron and this consists of what mostly triglycerides but it also includes the uh, 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 proteins that surround it and also some cholesterol now what happens to this uh, chylomicron the chylomicron travels through the bloodstream and have two possible fates uh, one is that the blood borne uh, fat can travel to fat cells or adipocytes for storage or to the muscle cells uh, for breakdown so this chylomicron uh, uh, goes to the uh, liver and then the liver distributes it either sends it to the muscle cell for metabolism or to the fat cell for storage let's look at this uh, carbon molecule so this carbon molecule has uh, 18 carbon uh, uh, it's 18 
uh, fatty acid long so this is the fatty acids over here you see so this fatty acid over here contains one two three four five so forth so all together it contains 18 carbons uh, what happens in beta oxidation so we're looking at the beta oxidation over here in beta oxidation basically what happens is the coenzyme A comes and coenzyme A basically binds to this uh, region of the uh, uh, fatty acid so if you take the fatty acid and bind it to this region that's what you basically uh, get so when I take this uh, fatty acid over here this coenzyme A and combine it with this one let's look how it would look like so this fatty acid would look with the coenzyme A uh, different so what it shows over here you see this coenzyme A uh, now this coenzyme A that you see over here is bound to the fatty acid so this fatty acid plus this coenzyme A both of them will give us this so now what we have is we have fatty acid combined with the coenzyme A do we need anything for this reaction uh, uh, do we require any input yes for this reaction in order for this to combine with coenzyme A and become fatty acid coenzyme A we need ATP molecules so one ATP will be converted to AMP so we're investing in this reaction as a result we're getting this uh, uh, reaction over here so you, we took uh, this reaction requires one ATP to be converted to AMP it requires coenzyme A so if you have fatty acid coenzyme A and ATP as a result you will produce what fatty acid coenzyme A so the next step is what is going to happen you see this acetyl co uh, the co this coenzyme A over here that you see this coenzyme A will take this two carbon molecule this two co coenzyme A will take this two carbon molecule and will disattach itself and when this is disattached we call this one what acetyl coenzyme A and this is this molecule over here so from the 16 carbon we took this two carbon out with the coenzyme A and now it's called what acetyl coenzyme A if you recall from previous uh, 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 presentations this acetyl coenzyme A will enter where it will enter the Krebs cycle and in the Krebs cycle what is it going to do in the Krebs cycle it will produce uh, uh, basically 3 NADH 1 FAD this is wrong this number should be 1 so it produces 1 FADH 3 NADH and 1 GTP so basically this acetyl coenzyme A that took 2 carbon out because the coenzyme A bound to the 2 carbon and we get this acetyl coenzyme A the acetyl coenzyme A goes to the Krebs cycle and produces 3 NADH 1 FADH 1 GTP what else is produced in this reaction and this reaction also one NADH is produced and one FADH so all together if you look at it all together you produce three NADH here and one NADH here you produce one FADH here and one FADH over here so all together four NADHs are produced and two FADH is produced and one GTP is produced we know that each NADH one NADH that goes through the electron transport chain produces 3 ATP so 1 NADH equals 3 ATP if there are 4 NADH 12 ATP if there are 1 FADH equals 2 ATP if there are 2 FADH that's 4 ATP and 1 GTP equals 1 ATP so by removing just 2 carbon we produced 17 ATPs by removing this other 2 carbon in the next round we're gonna produce again acetyl coenzyme A, NADH, FADH and then we're going to remove another two carbon we're going to produce acetyl coenzyme A, NADH, FADH again we're going to remove this two carbon molecule we're going to produce another acetyl coenzyme A, NADH, FADH so by removing every two carbon we're producing acetyl coenzyme A, NADH and FADH and acetyl coenzyme A will enter each time the Krebs cycle and in the Krebs cycle it will produce NADH, FADH and GTP. Hope this helps.